everyone! My name is Maki Aime, natural commentator living in Japan. Want to know what natural means? I'll tell you. It's a term from Moho Suit Ganam Seed. In this world, there is a race of people called coordinators. It's a term for humans who have been born as a result of artificial genetic manipulation. On the other hand, natural refers to humans who are biologically born naturally without any genetic manipulation. Today, I'm going to introduce the main Gunam that appears in Gunam Seed. The name of this mobile suit is Strike, also referred to as Stry Gunam. Have you ever heard the term first Gunam? It refers to the main robot that appeared in the very first Annie work, Mobile Suit Gunam. It's a respectful way of referring to it as the first existence that was born. And as many works were created, there were more situations where it became confusing whether calling something simply Gunam referred to this mobile suit or the entire Gunam series. In such cases, the term first Gunam can help to avoid confusion. This strike is sometimes referred to as the first Gunam of the 21st century. Depending on the source, it may also be referred to as the first Gunam of the new century. This is a term that the company producing the Gunam series uses to express concepts like the first Gunam for a new generation and aiming to return to the origin. This time, I'm going to take on the challenge of explaining this Stry Gunam. Let's talk about the Stry Gunam, known as the first Gunam of the 21st century. Stry Gunam is one of the mobile suits secretly developed by the Atlantic Federation, a member of the massive organization known as the Earth Alliance, with technological cooperation from the Orb Union. During the time this mobile suit was developed, the Earth Alliance was struggling greatly against the main weapons of the soft forces, the mobile suits. Zaft is a nation of space dwellers, primarily coordinators. The mobile suits developed by the technology and intellect of the coordinators were extremely powerful weapons. The Earth Alliance, not possessing any mobile suits, was in a desperate situation. The Zaft Force's main mobile suit, the Jin, was analyzed to have the combat capabilities of five of the Earth Alliance's combat weapons. The Earth Alliance hastened the development of mobile suits in order to escape this crisis. They attempted to capture the Zaft Force's Jin, and they requested cooperation from the Orb Union, a neutral nation. Orb is a neutral nation that accepts coordinators. The Earth Alliance was cornered to the point where they had to request cooperation from Orb. And what was completed was the GATX series of mobile suits. This series primarily uses three basic frame structures. The 100 series are mobile suits with a basic skeleton. The 200 series are designed to equip special functions. The 300 series are designed to utilize transformation functions. The Stry Gundam is the fifth mobile suit in the 100 series. And with the addition of the X indicating that it is a prototype, it is called X-105 Strike. Actually, the name Stry Gundam is not the official way to call it. The protagonist, Kira Yamato, came up with the name from the initials of the software displayed in the cockpit. General, unilateral, neural link, dispersive, autonomic, maneuver synthesis system. This is the name of the software that is activated when using the strike. In the story, Kira calls the strike Gunam, and some characters who hear Kira's remark use the word Gunam. It sort of become a colloquial name. In the merchandising of goods including plastic models, the name Gunam is actively used. This is a decision made for commercial reasons. 
At the start of the Gundam Seed story, the Earth Alliance's base is attacked by Zaft forces. Zaft had obtained information about the Earth Alliance's new weapons, referred to as the G weapons. This time refers to five Gundam units, including Strike. By the start of the story, these five G weapons were already completed. Strike was the last of the five units to be completed. Thus among the five prototype units, it had the highest level of compression and superior mobility. Compared to the other units, the technology accumulated during the production of the other units was also utilized in Strike. Strike's main feature is the striker pack system. Depending on the situation, equipment can be replaced as needed, allowing Strike to specialize for specific situations. Here are Yamato. The protagonist primarily operates three types of striker packs throughout the story. The Owl Striker designed for high mobility combat, the Soul Striker for effective close quarters combat against enemy mobile suits and warships, and the Launcher Striker primarily used for supporting allies and long-range bombardment for base and ship-to-ship -ship combat. He skillfully switches between these packs in battle. In this program, we will explain the Stry Gundam in its unequipped state. We will prepare a dedicated program for the Stry Gundam equipped with the Striker Pack, so stay tuned. Interestingly, the Stry Gundam had a fatal flaw. This same flaw was present in the other four units as well. Surprisingly, the software necessary to operate the units was unfinished. It was difficult even to start the unit. But this flaw was resolved when Kira accidentally boarded the unit. During combat, Kira rewrote the software to improve it, allowing him to operate the strike. His action surprised the military experts who boarded with him. However, due to the software modifications at this time, Strike became a unit that could only be operated by Kira. Although it was deployed in actual combat, it was still unfinished as a weapon. Later in Nob, Strike underwent repairs and improvements, and as for Nautilus was installed based on the data from Kiro's operation, Mulov 5 ended up piloting it. This achieved the initial goal of the mobile suit's development a mobile suit operable, even by Nautilus. Based on the completed Strike, the Earth Alliance would go on to develop mass production mobile suits. Strike's successful operation by Kira also made big news. For the Earth Alliance, it was seen as a symbol of victory. For Zaft, it was perceived as a formidable enemy to be defeated technically and historically. Strike was a significant existence. Also, Strike was equipped with innovative technology. The face shift armor. The majority of the weapons used by Zaft mobile suits, including machine guns, bazookas, and close combat souls, were not being weapons but physical objects. The face shift armor was born to counter this. It is a technology that changes the properties of the armor by applying a certain voltage to it, allowing it to nullify physical impacts. It's an amazing technology. I don't completely understand this mechanism either. It's a great invention that completely changes the power balance. By improving heat resistance, the armor also provides better defense against being weapons than normal armor. Another feature of face shift armor is that its color changes depending on the material and supply rate of voltage. The reason why different units have different colors is due to this setting. A weakness of phase shift armor is that it consumes significantly more energy from the unit's battery than normal armor. Furthermore, when the energy is supplied to the phase shift armor decreases, the color of the armor turns gray, which is also a drawback. It inadvertently informs the enemy of the user's condition. However, it's still a powerful armor that more than makes up for these drawbacks. Strike's arms have a unique feature not 
found in other units. They have a structure very similar to the human body and can nearly replicate human movements. This is related to the trend of existing weapons, including soft sin. Developing specialized weapons when developing units. The downside was that these weapons could not perform to their full potential on non-specialized units. Therefore, Strike was given the capability to utilize any weapon through flexible arm construction. On the other hand, this led to increased maintenance difficulty and cost. This function was deemed excessive and unnecessary, causing too much cost. Subsequent units were not equipped with this feature. Now, let's discuss the overall specifications of the Striker Pack. The Striker Pack is an additional equipment exclusively for Strike. It's a set of equipment attached to the back and arms, altering the performance of the Gundam based on its functionality. As it can be chosen according to specific combat situations, it enhances the versatility of the unit additionally. The Striker Pack is equipped with a battery that stores the unit's energy. Hence, by swapping the Striker Pack on the battlefield, Strike is also capable of replenishing its energy. Thanks to the combination of a battery and equipment in the Striker Pack, Strike became a unit capable of long-duration combat and adapting to changing battlefields. Among the five prototype units, Strike has the disadvantage of consuming a significant amount of battery power. In fact, Strike places primary importance on depending on its phase shift armor for defense. It reduces the amount of armor, focusing on enhancing mobility as a result. Compared to the other four units, it's capable of agile and flexible movements, which is its strong point. However, this results in faster energy consumption because more energy supply is required for the phase shift armor. The Striker Pack compensates for this drawback of high energy consumption. In the story scenes are depicted, where Strike after running out of energy, manages to escape a crisis by swapping its Striker Pack. Although the Striker Pack is potent, the unit's weaponry becomes very limited without it. However, the defensive power obtained from the phase shift armor and high mobility remain intact, suggesting that the unit itself has high potential in fact. There are scenes in the story where the enemy mobile suits are defeated after discarding the Striker Pack. That's a rough overview of the Striker Pack. It's an entity that while referencing the first Gundam possesses unique features. The system where the Gundam's performance changes drastically according to its equipment is very intriguing. Due to its popularity among fans, this method has been incorporated into many series other than Gundam Seed. Let me talk to you about the armaments of the Stry Gundam. First, Here's the anti-air automatic Vulcan cannon turret system Eagle-Stellung that's integrated into the head. This device is designed to automatically intercept incoming enemy aircraft and missiles. Interestingly, it's an adaptation of weaponry used by the Earth Alliance's battleships and gun turrets. Modified for use on mobile suits, typically it's quite challenging to penetrate mobile suit armor, so it's primarily used for destruction and interception. However, it can also prove to be a highly effective weapon in close combat, particularly when targeting an enemy's cameras or sensors. Another noteworthy armament is the ultra-hard metallic combat knife armor Schneider located on the waist. This is not just any knife. It can vibrate its braid at high frequencies through a super vibration motor, thereby generating a destructive force capable of slicing through any kind of armor. As it lacks an energy composed blade like a beam saber, it doesn't display much power against phase shift armor. But some documents suggest that it can be effective against phase shift armor if used by a skilled pilot. In fact, in the narrative, there were moments where it dealt significant damage to the duo Gunnam, which had been seized by Zaft. This knife is equipped with a dedicated battery. That is, it's a weapon that can be used without draining the energy of the battery installed in the strike's body. This makes it an exceedingly crucial piece of equipment for the energy-demanding strike. In fact, 
There is an Annie that served as the inspiration for this night. It's a piece called Metal Armor Drug Girl produced by Sunrise, the same company that created the Gundam series. And Mitsuo Fukuda, who served as the director for Gundam Seed, had also been involved in the production of this anime. In that anime, the main robot Drug Girl, one was supposed to be equipped with a knife. However, the director, Tai Kendra rejected its use. He thought that showcasing a knife in a children's anime could create a villainous image. So in Drug Girl, the knife was never used in the series. It was merely included as an accessory with the model kit. Drug Girl is still a beloved classic with its own fanbase, and so is Gundam Seed. The choices made by both Kukude and Kanda can be said to have accurately reflected the times. The term armor in the knife's name is in English, while Schneider is German, meaning armor it's a co-composite term that combines both English and German. Next, we have the powerful beam rifle. This miniaturized beam cannon was the pinnacle of weaponry during the time when strike was deployed. Even the South Army's team had a huge beam cannon as an optional armament, but it was cumbersome and had a low power output. This beam rifle, however, can pierce through even the most robust battleship armor with a single shot. It's an extremely potent beam rifle, but the technology leaked when Gundams other than the strike were captured by Zaft. This resulted in both armies gaining access to beam weaponry, and thus face shift armor lost its absolute advantage. The widespread adoption of regular armor in many of the mobile suits appearing in Gundam Seed can largely be attributed to the development and dissemination of beam weaponry. While face shift armor itself is powerful equipment, it continued to be used in some high-end models. This beam rifle operates by drawing energy from the main body. Consequently, if used excessively, it could deplete the main body's energy. Now let's talk about the anti-beam shield, a piece of defensive equipment. This shield is coated with a special paint that has the property of absorbing and diffusing beam attacks. Here's a little explanation about the shield. Please try to concentrate. It might get a bit complex. This shield is made from a composite metal, which is made from steel materials that each have their own specific resonance frequency to cause a special reaction phenomenon. This metal through a microscopic thread pattern refracts the progression of the beam to protect the user. The mechanics behind this are so convoluted that it might even give you a headache just thinking about it. Sometimes in reference materials, you might see a simpler description, like a shield with a beam-resistant coating. This is much easier to understand, and we are grateful for that. This shield is actively used to block enemy attacks, and as a result, it wears down quite quickly so, the costly face shift armor isn't used. This is why the color of the shield remains the same even when the strike, and other Gundams are in face shift down state. It is certainly not because the animators got the colors mixed up. One less frequently seen weapon is the anti miss bazooka. This bazooka is used in underwater conditions, where the power of beam weaponry significantly decreases. When the model kit was released, it was given the name Strike Bazooka. You can't overlook the impressive large physical sword. The grand slam this weapon was created when a high-end model kit called Perfect Grade was released initially. There were plans to incorporate it into the storyline. The grand slam was designed as a huge sword for the strike. A very powerful weapon indeed, however, it was not officially adopted because the more maneuverable armor Schneider was chosen. But later, due to changes in the setting, this weapon ended up not existing in the world of the story. It's a shame because it's really cool. These are the basic equipment of the strike. Even without the striker packs equipped, the strike boasts quite an impressive array of weapons. Let's take a look at the strike's role in the storyline. The Earth Alliance secretly developed the Gundam at the resource satellite Heliopolis, however. This bomb was discovered by the Zoft army. Amid the chaos of the Zoft's attack, 
The student Kira Yamato boarded the strike. In the ensuing battle, Kira rewrote the mobile suit software to maximize its capabilities and destroyed the enemy unit. The MF-1017 Jin, Kira as a coordinator, had incredible abilities. But don't you think his skills seemed naturally high even for a coordinator? As you watch the story, you will come to understand the reason. As a result of modifying the software, Kira became the dedicated pilot for Strike. While evading Saft, Strike scored significant victories. In Africa, he defeated Bradfield, Darkseid's pilot and powerful commander, and his team at sea. He defeated the Moorin team, experts in underwater combat. These were quite famous individuals within Saft. The victories over these experts drew attention to Strike from both the Alliance and Zaft. However, the Aegis Gundam, which had been stolen by Zaft, was severely damaged in a kamikaze attack, prepared to result in mutual destruction. The badly damaged Strike was repaired by all, and software for Nautilus, incorporating Kiro's battle data, was installed thus. Strike was completed as a weapon, but a shocking fate awaited Strike. The warship Archangel, to which Strike belonged, decided to desert the Earth Alliance. The Earth Alliance carried out a plan to annihilate the enemy with a massive weapon, killing their own soldiers in the process witnessing this act. The crew and commander of the Archangel decided to leave the Earth Alliance, the Archangel on strike. Having collected sufficient data, were forced to participate in the Earth Alliance's operation as pawns. During this operation, they executed their plan to desert the Earth Alliance. Strike and the Archangel began operating as a third force, different from both the Earth Alliance and Zaft. Even when Orb was attacked by the Earth Alliance, Strike demonstrated its excellent combat capabilities. It performed brilliantly against the mass-produced mobile suits known as Strike Daggers, which were based on Strike. This is a significant departure from the storyline of the first Gundam, where Gundam fought alongside the mass-produced mobile suits called Jin. In the final battle, at the Space Fortress Jack and Do, Strike was reduced to a wreck by the Providence Gundam's attacks. The Providence Gundam was a powerful new model created from data on the Gundam stolen by Zaft. Strike was defeated in the face of a large performance gap. The fact that it was able to retreat from the battlefield without being destroyed can be considered fortunate. Subsequently, a powerful beam cannon from an enemy warship attacked the Archangel. Strike raised its shield to protect the Archangel from the beam cannon, but it exploded as a result of the attack, and so the appearances of the Strike Gundam in Gundam C came to an end. That concludes our commentary on the Stry Gundam. How did you find it? I have one more interesting piece of information to share with you. Do you remember that the director of Gundam Seed was involved in the production of an anime called Dragor? The robots appearing in Dragor are called Metal Armors. It's the same phenomenon as calling robots mobile suits in the world of Gundam. Metal armors are characterized by humanoid robots carrying parts that resemble wings. Don't you find this characteristic familiar? Yes, it's similar to the design of the Striker Pack. And the Striker Pack became a huge trend in the world of Gundam C due to the success of the Stry Gundam. Many mobile suits began to carry equipment on their backs similar to the Striker Pack. Many fans feel that this design is similar to Dragor. This is not surprising at all. After all, the director, who is directing the production, was involved in Dragor in the past. You could even call Dragor and Stry Gundam siblings. We are preparing a program about the Striker Pack, so look forward to it. Now let me share a great piece of information at the end. The subscribe button on the screen you are looking at is actually a button to activate Face Shift Armor. It will enhance the device you are using with invincible armor. It's definitely worth a try, so please give it a go. I'll see you in the next lecture. Take care.